For as long as we can remember, Joe Rogan has been coming up with podcast ideas that leave us stunned. Sometimes they're super exciting, and sometimes they can be downright outrageous. Like him or not, one thing is for sure, the man knows how to keep his audience hooked. Today we'll be going over the top 10 most emotional Joe Rogan podcasts ever. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Starting with Joe and Rhonda. Due to the shocking manner in which Rousey's fighting career was cut short, it's easy to forget the impact she had on the MMA scene in her prime. The Olympic bronze medalist defended her UFC women's bantamweight title with a knockout victory against Beth Correa in Brazil in 2015. This victory came during her undefeated 12-fight professional run. Few people at the time would have guessed Rousey's last time getting her hand raised inside the octagon would be here. Since he got choked up when talking about seeing Rousey's historic win in person on episode 690 of his podcast, it's evident Rogan was a major fan of hers. Rogan was visibly moved to tears and said he knew he was watching something historic with Rousey's victory, but he was trying to hold back his emotions. Needless to say, her impact on the sport of mixed martial arts is completely unquestionable. Next up, Shirley Manson. Although most viewers wouldn't necessarily anticipate an emotional GRE moment to come from Rogan's discussion with garbage's Shirley Manson, that's exactly what they got. Rogan and Manson obviously have tremendous chemistry together, as seen by their discussion about Joe's children, a subject that Rogan seldom discusses on the podcast but which came up during an outstanding episode in which the rocker discussed the drawbacks of popularity and success in the music business. From the get-go, Rogan's unwavering devotion to his kids is clear. He talks about how difficult it is to put into words how much he feels about his family and how having kids has fundamentally altered his life and the lives of many of his friends. If you haven't watched this edition of the podcast yet, you should. The guest has a wealth of interesting anecdotes and insights to share. Moving on, Elon Musk. The Tesla CEO's decision to smoke a joint on the JRE, the subsequent impact on Tesla shares, and the media's hysterical response to an adult man's enjoyment of a legal drug will live on forever. This is a great loss since episode 1169 of the JRE has a fascinating back and forth and provides an intriguing insight into the thinking of one of the world's greatest geniuses, despite some discomfort in the show's opening minutes. While Musk has become a controversial character due to his past deeds and comments, no one can deny he really believes his ideas will improve people's lives everywhere. The need for drastic change, Musk argues in his chat with Rogan, is essential to guaranteeing the planet's long-term survival. This episode was included because of Musk's evident fervor while discussing humanity's impact on the Earth, even if the emotion isn't as overt as in some of the others on the list. Now, how can we forget Kamaro? Witnessing a parent's unwavering love for their child is something that can move virtually anybody to tears. The fact that Kamaro Usman defeated Tyrone Woodley at UFC 235 to capture the UFC welterweight championship has further highlighted this. Woodley's mother was a constant spectator at his fights when he was a strong contender in the 170-pound weight class. After Woodley's brutal victory over Darren Till at UFC 228, his mother consoled the sad contender and assured him he would be back even stronger the next time around. In spite of her son's loss, Woodley's mother was nonetheless very cordial, comforting a distraught Usman with a hug after UFC 235 and assuring him there were absolutely no hard feelings. The footage of Woodley's mother hugging Usman after the fight was especially touched since, as Usman revealed on the JRE MMA show in 2019, he had met Woodley at a UFC event. Usman and Rogan feel emotional as they rewatch the clip of the touching moment they captured. Next, the bromance. Rogan's group of pals from the California comedy scene, which includes Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, and Ari Shafir, join him every year for Sober October in addition to the fight companion team of Brian Callen, Eddie Bravo, and Brendan Schaub. Joe is not immune to the inebriating effects of alcohol. As anybody who's had a few drinks can testify, there's something about being tipsy that makes you feel compelled to declare your undying devotion to your pals. In a 2017 podcast with the Sober October team, Rogan became a little teary-eyed when discussing how drinking had helped him express his gratitude to his friends. Throughout the episode, Rogan and his pals take turns gushing over one another, demonstrating the depth of their friendship. Joe's apparent affection for his buddies makes his future worry for Ari Shafir, who is also included on this list, all the more touching. Following up, Diamond Dallas Page. Joe Rogan has been a vocal advocate of exercise for its positive effects on on health, both mental and physical, and personal development since the beginning of his online content creation career. So it was inevitable that the 2018 episode with Diamond Dallas Page, former WCW heavyweight champion and current fitness guru with his own brand of yoga, would be a fruitful one. Dallas told several anecdotes about the lives that have been changed by his program's daily exercises, but the story of former paratrooper Arthur Borman, who'd been rendered unable to walk by the stress of a career of jumping out of planes, was the most moving. Rogan and Dallas watched a video of Borman's incredible transformation through the DDP yoga program. 
From nearly immobile and severely overweight to significantly losing weight and regaining mobility, Rogan was so moved by the sight of Borman, a former paratrooper who hasn't run in years, that he shed a tear as the video reached its climax. Nick Yaris Nick Yaris had a rough background and ended up in prison for auto theft and drug addiction. His life spiraled south after his first incarceration, and he ultimately spent over 30 years in jail for a crime he did not commit. While on the JRE in 2018, Yaris spoke about the terrible things that happened to him inside bars and how he kept believing the truth would set him free. As Yaris describes the abuse he endured throughout his life, the episode of the JRE may become difficult to listen to, but it's also vital to watch as an example of how someone can survive nearly inconceivable suffering and go on to live an apparently normal life despite it. Listening to the episode, Episode, it's tough not to empathize with Yaris, and it's astonishing he's able to speak about his life without becoming emotional. Up next, Morgan Fallon. Like many others, Rogan was devastated by Anthony Bourdain's suicide in 2018. While Rogan said he and Bourdain were good friends despite the fact they seldom saw each other due to their hectic schedules, Bourdain himself had featured on the podcast in its early years, on episode 138 all the way back in 2011. On Rogan's advice, the former chef and parts unknown host began training in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, where he progressed to the blue belt level until his unexpected death at age 61. Having Morgan Fallon and producer and director of Parts Unknown on the JRE so soon after their friend's death inevitably lent the show a somber tone of reflection. After Rogan began to cry at the thought of never seeing his buddy Bourdain again, the two sat down and spoke about their memories of their time together. The two gentlemen grieve appropriately and pay honor to the departed, all in the same episode, making it nearly therapeutic. Then there was Ari Shafir. The name Ari Shafir is probably not the first thing that comes to mind when you think of guests for heartfelt episodes of GRE. The American comedian is well known for his abrasive style of shock comedy and penchant for controversy, as seen by his statements regarding the late basketball star Kobe Bryant earlier in 2020. 20. Shafir displays remarkable candor as he discusses his difficulties with mental health and provides real insight into how close he thought he was to ending his own life. They discuss the ripple impact Shafir's melancholy had on their social circle, with Rogan sharing his worries about losing his buddy and his efforts to assist in any way he could. Rogan's demeanor is admirable as he says he tried to be there for Shafir even if he doesn't know how it feels to have such deep levels of sadness. Finally, Kevin Smith. Joe Rogan's affection for animals, especially his dog Marshall, is well known to anybody who follows him on Instagram or listens to his podcast. For those who don't already, witnessing the affection shared between Rogan and man's best friend is as easy as following Marshall on social media. In a 2018 interview with American director Kevin Smith, the two spoke on the special bonds individuals have with their dogs and the widespread affection for such companions. But when Joe starts talking about his dog, who had recurrent seizures, the mood takes a turn for the worse. Rogan recounts with emotion how he and the veteran Marion had a moment of shared grief after putting down the dog to end its misery. When he goes on to say the veterinarian Joe enjoyed the poignant moment with was subsequently murdered by a drunk driver, the tone of the narrative takes a rather somber turn. That's a wrap for this video. Which one was the most emotional for you? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.